The 2021 Endurance E-Racing World Championship Round 2, Film Vault 12 Hours of Silverstone, is brought to you in partnership with ESTV, Leak Gaming, Sim Lab, Motorvision.tv, Global Flix, Racing for Green, and AMD Ryzen Radeon. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Film Vault 12 Hours of Silverstone, where we're making our way into the final four hours of a race. And a warm welcome to everyone watching, either if you're watching the highlights. Well, this race has already happened. I won't give spoilers. Not that I can, because at the point of which I'm saying this, I don't know who's won the race yet. But thank you very much for watching the highlights. And if you're watching live on Amazon Fire, Roku, or ESTV, or even GTR 24 8 Thank you for staying tuned. For those of you watching in the radio, you would have heard about how Ewan O'Leary bailed previously. God, Ewan, bailing on terrible, us. Terrible. Terrible. Person. Either way, Neil, you wouldn't bail on me, would you? No, no, I wouldn't. Although, I, <laughs> no, I would not bail. But I have found out that obviously I have to fix the cable, keep on falling out the back of the mic. So I found some tape on the wall. I don't know why it's there. I can't remember where the tape is on the wall. But I found some, and now the cable is sellotaped to the back of the microphone. So it should not fall out from now. <laughs> I've, I've just seen in our production room you and uh, you and I are typing vicious, uh, t saying vicious <laughs> lines. Vicious, vicious I mean, <laughs> to, to be honest, I, I'm, I'm all for you enjoying joining, and we, we can have a bit of a try cast, <laughs> try cast for a bit. Um, but be, be, before that happens, before we talk about betrayals and Game of Thrones style things, let's talk about the battle for the GT3 cast because we are talking about just Stewart's over 15 decision. seconds separating the three drivers. Alexi Mizin leading. Stop the GT3 class field for the 717, Martin Milatai in the 41, and Sebastian Hode in the 13 Danish Sim Racing League car. Yes, and we've just got an instant decision from the incident that happened just before that last ad break. Car 22 has got a 60 second stop go, 22 being the LMP2 Mugen Sim Racing car after an incident with the uh, with another LMP2, the 007 Pro Sim car at turn one. So a 60 second stop go there for the 22 car, which is which was. Well, it's, it's technically still is because it hasn't actually because uh, it hasn't actually taken its penalty yet. That 22 car was doing very good. It was in fourth yep. place in class. It was fourth place and it's been closing by over four seconds a lap last time round. Two seconds on to Paul Holt and is currently ten seconds behind the 334 Fair Racing team. But clearly, Mugen Sim Racing haven't been playing it fair enough, and they're going to be dropping down in a 60 second stop go penalty. Turn lower is only one and a half minutes behind them. I actually think they, um, they, they're going to come out of the pits only about 10-15 seconds ahead and Turn Lower is absolutely flying right now. Yes, it's absolutely flying in that LMP2 car. As you said, setting incredibly fast lap times, especially in these conditions. It's like, what we, it's like what we said, I think it might have actually been myself and Alex said it beforehand, is that, you know, rain is like a great equalizer. That really, that really sorts out who the best drivers in the field are. It is a great equalizer unless one of you happens to be on a wet setup and the other one is on a dry setup. And in that case, then while it does kind of level up the playing field, one of you will have Incident an inherent advantage. Incident involving car number 766 and car number 717 on lap 234 in her near turn 3. Excuse me, looking at the number 13 uh, Danish racing lead car, Sebastian Hoogs, only four seconds behind the number 41 Mugen Sim racing car. And there's another incident under review between 766 and the 717 in or near turn 3. The 717 being the Unison racing car and the 766 being, if I can just find it again, which one are you? Unless I can't see things properly. It's the DSR Dream Team car, that's right, LMP2. So it's been an incident with the two of them at turn 3, which is the first hairpin of the loop. Yeah. And uh, just for more updates in the GT3 class battle, Alexi Mizzen, his last lap, doesn't exist. Martin Militai, a 212.9, and Sebastian Hove, a 211.8. Sebastian Hove now 3.6 seconds behind Martin Militai, who is at 10.6 behind Alexi Mizzen. So the gap between first and second is uh, remaining stable, or at least a lot more stable than the gap between Martin Militai and Sebastian Hove. 
Yes, and Sebastian Hope, look at that gap just coming down and down. Uh, I said it was four and a half seconds when they were coming, uh, when essentially I was looking at the track map, they were about coming out of the, uh, uh, coming into the hangar straight at that point. They're already coming down towards Brooklyn's and going through Luffield. Now, that gap is already three and a half seconds. Sebastian Hope is absolutely flying at the moment in that 13 car. Yeah, Martin Milita has brought the gap to Alexi Mizin down to under nine seconds. So things are really closing up. And even, uh, oh, I was going to say even Marcus Steyr, but Marcus Steyr is in the GTE car. And one thing that we've kind of seen now, because of this rain, you talked about how it levels up the field. The GTE cars are only, are only going about a second a lap quicker than the GT3 cars. And it's going to be very difficult for them to lap the GT3 cars when they do close in. Yes, and uh, as you said, lapping these GT3 cars, and uh, you know, it's going offline, especially in these conditions, because normally when you're lapping another car, you, exp you the general consensus is that the slower car stays on the racing line, and then the faster car needs to make its own way around it, essentially, but especially in these sorts of conditions where it's very wet off of the racing line, that just makes it all the more treacherous. Yep. You almost need a, a joker kind of lap that the guys can take to, to lap certain cars. But I'm still riding on board with Sebastian Hove and he's got about four or five cars up ahead. And one of those four or five cars up ahead is Martin Millertite in that 41 car. And uh, well, currently for Mugen Sim Racing in that 41 car, they finished third in the opening race. And Danish Racing League in that 13 finished second. So if things finish as they are, Danish Racing League and Mugen Sim Racing would be tied if it was not for the pole that they or that pole position that Danish Racing League were able to secure back at Indianapolis. Yes, one month ago ish at Indianapolis, we didn't manage to uh, uh, achieve that position. As you said, of course, looking forward to our next race in exactly four weeks' time. We'll be in the 12 hours of Stephen, so make sure you join us for that when hopefully all these drive cars, plus the ones who didn't make it this weekend, uh, will be there to make it a good, well, 35, 36 car field. I think it should be if it's a full grid. Yeah, it'll be a bigger field, and now. Speaking of big things, Sebastian Hove will be looking for a big move on Martin Militai because Martin Militai is the car right in front of Sebastian Hove. His team would have told him he'll probably know the design of that rear end of the McLaren well enough by now. He'll be searching for a way, that, way to pass the move in sim car racing at car. They've got the viaducting car, car not too much further up ahead. And uh, I actually think that is what well, they're actually looking to lap car the, the viaducting car as well as the DIS Stop SR lap. The car gets uh, a little bit wide through Beckett's. And sweeping past him will go Sebastian Hove. Yes, the 717 has got a 30 second stop goal for an incident with its 766 at turn 3. Of course that 717 car being the Unison Racing car that we were talking about in the GTs. Yeah, and that could be big, big news for Alexi Mizzen because now he's going to have a penalty presumably applied and he's going to have to serve that. And he's only 9.2 seconds ahead right now of Martin Militite. And he might be finding himself dropping it down to P3. So the top three from Indianapolis are your top three here at Silverstone. But whether they'll finish in that same order is something else entirely to be seen. Yes, as I believe we are about to have another interview. Uh, there we go, and with us at the moment from the number 15 Jesus Motorsport car, currently P5 in the LMP2 class, we have Jacques Barbosa. Hello guys. Who are currently P5 Incident in class with just sort of like the combined team this weekend, shall we put it that way, because obviously you are a very, a very accomplished BT racer, but moving into the LMP2s for this race. Uh, yes, uh, like uh, this morning I wake up and I, I, I was planning to do some GT heat testing or f of practice for, for VEC, but uh, we have a problem on our lineup, so Nick uh, asked me if I can jump in the car, so I literally had like uh, 
10 minutes of practice to another track in the car and go ahead so uh, but i really like this car i mean uh, i my experience is more on gtvs actually but uh, uh, i really like the darwin p2 car so uh, when you suddenly get this call up, if you like, to switch across to the LMP2 car, when you are suddenly, uh, when you suddenly have to change what class of car you're driving, what sort of processes do you go through at that point to think, right, I need to, uh, despite practicing GTs for the past couple of weeks, I now need to properly race an LMP2 in just a few hours. What are the thought process and what is your, well, what is also your process for getting used to the change between the two very different types of car? Well, I, I didn't actually have uh, much time because that was literally uh, 30 minutes before I jumped in the car, so uh, I only did like 10 laps to another track. But the most difficult thing on the, on the, on this change is actually the uh, the the um, the multiple class uh, uh, lapping thing. I mean the passing GT, GTs and GT3s because. Uh, uh, if uh, I'm used to be lapped, you know, I'm a GTH, so I'm used to that process. Uh, LMP2 is a, a little bit different, but uh, the the most difficult uh, thing that I had in my first thing was uh, understanding where was the points that uh, I could pass the GTHs, uh, because I I literally don't know uh, where I was much fast much faster than than the others, so. That first thing that I told me that was terrifying because of that, because I really didn't know where I could pass the, the other cars. So that was the, the most uh, diffi difficult uh, process because the setup is okay. I mean, um, uh, the, the, the guys develop a, a separate setup that works uh, on the dry and the wet, probably better on the wet. And Tion is doing right now a fantastic job. Uh, but um, I believe that the most difficult part is that that uh, lapping cars. And I suppose because you just suddenly jumped in the car, you've got to kind of trust the setup that your teammates have made over the past couple of weeks or so. Yeah, the setup is uh, pretty nice. I mean, the, 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 the thing is, I, I had the first thing to get used to the lines, where it was the, the, the lines, uh, because it's very di different from the, from the GTEs, because in these lines, you decision. can throw the car and the, you can pull it on, you know, on the GTEs, that doesn't have it. So, uh, it's, it's a little two. bit different, Stewart's decision. Uh, but uh, the setup was pretty good. Uh, I didn't have any, any problems go. with that. I uh, didn't have any spin or crash with the, on my first things. Uh, so uh, I think the, the guys did an amazing job to prepare the setup. So will you be getting Incident into the review. car again at Incident some point in the new future? Or is that you done for today since the rain and the darkness is coming? Uh, uh, actually, I don't know. Uh, right now, Tony is doing a great job. So uh, in these mixed conditions, we probably uh, might leave it in the car because I, he just told me that it stopped raining. So uh, it's uh, better to get a, a driver to uh, understand the car and the lines, but uh, I might jump to the, in the car uh, until the end of the race, I think. So you, car, you currently are a P5 in class, are you aiming for anything higher than that today or do you think P5 is kind of because of the gaps kind of around, uh, between the cars around you, so do you think P5 really is kind of maximum that you can get today? Well, I will say P5 is a pretty uh, nice result. Uh, the, 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 the teams here are pretty strong, so I, I will believe P5 is really good. Uh, right now we are fighting with uh, the Yamada boys. Uh, I think they had some problems when they start raining because they, uh, they lost some time. Uh, and uh, that 60 stop and go penalty to the 22 uh, help us to get a little bit close. And uh, well, uh, we are really 
um, behind that 22, so we, we weren't expecting to be that close right now. But uh, we have a still long ways to go. Stop raining. We we should see if it's the rain coming again. So uh, I will say uh, between P4 and P6 will be our position if nothing happens badly for us. Uh, Yusuf, do you have uh, any other questions for Joe? Uh, not particularly that I would like to mention. I mean, Drow, any shout outs regarding sponsors, uh, etc.? Uh, I will leave that to Nick. <laughs> 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 but I, I will pass that and uh, and uh, congratulate you, you guys, be, be, uh, on the great work you you did on streaming and commenting because uh, it's really difficult to be here uh, long hours and you guys do uh, a great job. So congratulations for that. Well, thank you, Joao, very much for joining us. Um, Literally, right as we end this interview, we just see an incident happening in the battle for the GT3 class as Sebastian Hove pulled off a move on Alexi Mizin, but ran a little bit wide going into village corner and got tapped on the rear end, spinning Sebastian Hove around. So Sebastian Hove now finds himself back down in third place. So he's not going to be happy with that one, and he's got all of that work to do all over again, Neil. Yes, he has all that work to do again, and he got a little bit of a bump from behind by the looks of it. So, yeah, Sebastian Hull has a lot of work to do. It's, oh, that's a. Uh, I was just having a quick move of the stream, I was looking at timing before having a quick move of the stream. There's an LP2 car having a very, a very interesting excursion at, at uh, Brooklyn, so let's put it that way. Uh, but yes, and there's been a couple of penalties uh, handed out while we were speaking to uh, Zhao. The first one is, just let me find the list actually first. The first one was, uh, sorry, uh, that's right, we talked about the 30 second stop go for car at 7 oh, Let's just hold that thought for a team. second, Neil, because uh, here comes uh, Martin Militite, and he's going to go down the inside of Alexi Mizen up into Stowe Corner. This is uh, for the lead of the GT3 class. Uh, Martin Militite has uh, pulled it off. The 41 Mugen Sim Racing car takes the lead of the GT3 field. Yes, taking the lead of the GT3 field, an extra seven points for that number 41 car. As, and as you said, just passing the 717 Unison Racing car as they are coming across the start finish line now to begin lap number. Oh, where's the timing list? I can't quite remember. To begin lap 237 for those two. Yeah, our race leader, Jan Woznicka in the number 10 pins and drillers eSports car on to a lap at 268. And we have just over three and a half hours remaining of the race. So, Sebastian, oh, pardon me, Martin Militai now leads away, but Sebastian Hove riding on board with him now, he can see in his view very clearly Martin Militai and Alexi Mizin. And uh, I'm sure he'll be able to get through fairly quickly. We know he was the quickest driver of this three-way battle. And uh, Tone Lower as well at the moment. Only 22 seconds behind uh, Zoltan Boda. And uh, closing in as well at a decent pace. At three seconds quicker that last time around. Yes, a few seconds quicker that time around, as you said. But just by having a look at it, Hove really has not... Hove is keeping up with the cars ahead, at least. You've got to remember there's only 1.4... Sorry, there's only... Excuse me, there's only two seconds pretty much separating the top three in the GT3s as it stands. As they're all making their way down towards the S's. Yeah, and you can see how much more confidence right now Sebastian Hove has than Alexi Mizzen. He's going to get a much better run coming out of Beckett's uh, through Chapel Corner. And uh, the closing speed is uh, fairly visible. He's going to tuck in right behind uh, the Unison Racing car. And LMP2 will come uh, flying past. Uh, and here we go down the inside for Sebastian Hove into Stowe Corner. There's contact between the two of them as Sebastian Hove just understeers into the side of the Unison Racing car. But he gets the move done and he moves up into a P2 of the GT3 class. Yeah, it's just kind of... Yeah, just kind of understeered uh, through them. There was really nothing he could do. It's almost like, it's almost like he's aquaplaning in a way. 
I would say just in our ears and indeed having a good time. Your screen's the 717 of Alexia Mizen in that 717 Unison racing car is coming to the pits. And I'm wondering if he's coming to the pits just now to serve that penalty that you received about 10 minutes ago. It might very well be. I mean, he's tried his best uh, and uh, for his longest amount of time to keep the likes of Sebastian Hove and Martin Militai behind. And now that they've eventually got through, there's nothing really to be gained by New staying out in front report. of them. Might incident as well just uh, car now get your, drive, get your drive, get your penalty served and dusted. Bradley Brock is right now 17 three. seconds behind a B32 racing turn lower on that last lap round. A second quicker than Zoltan Bodda, now 18.8 seconds behind uh, the man who currently resides in P4 in the LMP2 class. It's in that LMP2 class, as you said, looking to do a very good job there. But something uh, something that I was going to say just before that, that, that series of battles broke out is that, uh, of course, we did talk about the 717 Unison Racing Car having a 30-second stop go for having an incident with the 766 DSR Dream Team. About five, seconds, about five minutes later, the 766 DSR Dream Team car got a 30-second stop go for an instant with a 188 Teleferningen car and that 188 car appears to have had been at the receiving end of quite a few incidents that's caused penalties to other cars today. Yep, I think it was a case actually last month as well back at Indianapolis but either way they'll be hoping that they can keep things uh, clean up for themselves for the rest of the race. Uh, just keeping an eye on some other gaps uh, via Duckton. I think it's currently Mikel Sigor at the wheel, 15 seconds behind Jose Berengala. And um, actually at the moment lapping nearly two seconds a lap uh, slower as Jose Berengala trying to close in to Donat Prodan in the 66 Volante racing car. Bradley Bro Brock is still 13 seconds behind B32 racing, but he is uh, bringing that gap down slowly but surely. So I think in a uh, Maybe 10 minutes time, he should have that gap to under 5 seconds, roughly. Well, that's a rather large claim, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> what was that change in voice? It was just like, you, you have yeah, angered that. the gods. <laughs> you, you have angered the gods. This means this does not happen anymore. You have mentioned it, therefore it will not happen. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Sebastian Holmes about three and a half seconds, three, three and a half seconds behind the number 41 Mugen Sim Racing car now in P2. This is a yellow flag in sector one for somewhere, at least it was a few seconds ago, but that appears to have cleared up. But yes, uh, Sebastian Hove looking to chase down Ma Martin Militai in that 41 Mugen car as the sun is setting here at Silverstone and it's definitely now getting a lot more darker. Yeah. Also, that thing about being under 5 seconds, you know how it was about 13 seconds from Bradley Brocky to B32 Racing like less than a minute ago? Yes. Yeah, it's under 10 seconds now. Oh no. <laughs> yeah, Who the, looks the, the, smarter now? Ah! <laughs> But yes, that that gap is coming down very quickly as you are saying. And Sebastian Hove, that gap appears to be um, appears to be uh, stabilising at the moment at roughly about three and a half, three point six seconds as it stands. You just, you just had to commentate to Castle. Literally, as soon as you said that, it dropped to two point two seconds. No. <laughs> but on the plus side, that means that it's getting closer, which means we're going to have a battle on our hands for the GT3 race lead. Yes, a battle on our hands for the GT3 race lead, as you said, coming down towards the club chicane. And I'd be incredibly pre impressed if you could lunge from two seconds into, into the club chicane, but I have a feeling that even on the last lap of the race, that would not be a particularly viable strategy. All that number 13 car needs to do is just slowly, methodically close down that gap and eventually get straight onto the rear wing of the number 41. Yeah. Uh, I, I remember a, a video that I think it was WTF1 did where they, I think they got Matthew Gallagher to, to go in and do some F1 driver training. And one of, the, one of the things that they did was 
how to focus your eyes when turning into corners and not to look at the apex where like not to look at the bit where your car is as we just see one of the LMP2 cars spinning through uh, the loop but it was actually to make sure that you're always looking ahead you know just drive instinctively at the part that you're at and look ahead and that way you're you're always aware of what's going on up the road and I think it kind of ties into to what you said because you can dive from two seconds behind but I think at that point uh, your eye isn't on the corner or ahead it's firmly on the car in front of you and uh, you're aiming to just smack into them Yes, and aiming to smack into them is not good. No, you mean, no. Gen generally in sim racing, it's okay because you don't have to pay for the damage. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I, I wouldn't say it's okay because you don't have to pay for the damage. <laughs> I mean, it is a probably prefer to smack into someone in sim racing compared to real racing where you may kill them, but I think it's frowned upon generally. <laughs> Yes, kind of, generally hitting people with uh, hitting, driving into people is frowned upon. I think I think that look, I think that is a general rule that we can all abide look, by. Neil, say the smacking for Tekken, right? Yes, I've I've never been good at button mash. Well, no, I say button mashes. I'm sure there's probably a a, a, a strategy to Tekken, but really everyone what everyone does is just button mash. Yeah, the, I mean. Uh, we we still got Street Fighter 2 in my house on the old Nintendo and um, everyone plays it apart from me because I hate it. Because I press a button and nothing happens and then it happens like later. So it gives me an excuse I can blame the game for the reason why I'm terrible but also I, I hate the game as well. And uh, some, sometimes my friends would bring uh, Smash over and I'm terrible at that as well. I'm, I'm just terrible at, at fighting games in general uh, because they're not racing games. So, so there we go. There's an incredible free version of Bomberman on Steam now. It's absolutely fun oh, to play with friends. Anyway, uh, Bomberman. Yeah. What I'll have to send this video Bomberman? to you. I'll, I'll, I'll have to. <laughs> you please don't ask if I've really got friends. Please, please don't do that in the production room chat. <laughs> it's I, I feel like this could be the next, you know, G GTR content. You know, um, GTR 24H staff play. What was it called again? Bomberman. I can't remember what is it, I can't remember what the version is called, but it's a version of Bomberman. Yeah. Bomberman. Okay. Do you just go around like bombing things? Oh, it's an incredibly fun party game uh, that you play. It's absolutely fantastic. <laughs> uh, but anyway, we are reaching the half hour mark. The minute hand is reaching the bottom of the clock, and as a result, we will now take a short break to have some words from our sponsors, and we'll be right back. The 2021 Endurance E-Racing World Championship Round 2, Film Bowl 12 Hours of Silverstone, is brought to you in partnership with ESTV, Leap Gaming, Sim Lab, Motorvision.tv, Global Flix, Racing for Green, and AMD Ryzen Radeon.
Racing for Green is here to help you carbon neutralize your racing. By planting new trees, Racing for Green offers to make your racing carbon neutral. We already have the calculations, contacts, infrastructure, deals and solutions ready for you to easily buy carbon neutral laps on any racetrack. It doesn't matter if you are a racing fan, team owner, driver, sponsor or partner. Anyone can buy CO2 neutral laps in the Racing for Green webshop and trade CO2 emissions for new forest. Racing for Green. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Film Vault, 12 hours of Silverstone. We're making our way into the final three and a half hours of the race. Once again, welcome to everyone watching from the likes of Roku, ESTV, Amazon Fire, or on the likes of YouTube, Twitch, and Facebook Live. And uh, so far, Neil, we've had a, a pretty entertaining race. Lots of battles coming through, and as the rain has come down, we saw that fantastic three-way battle for the lead of the GT3 class. Yes, we did, and I believe as a result of that fantastic battle, the 13 cars got a penalty uh, for that contact with the 66 uh, that we saw coming into, uh, coming into Stowe. Yeah, so Sebastian Hove has uh, a lot of work uh, to do now. Uh, well, I'm going to have to see exactly how far behind Martin Militai he is. We saw Alexei Mizin having a, a stop-go penalty, so he's dropped even further down the order. But at the moment, things are looking good for Mugen Sim Racing. Yes, things are looking very good for the Mugen Sim Racing Corporation. Their LMP2 car is currently 7th overall and 5th in class. And in terms of uh, their GT efforts, their uh, GT3 car is currently leading. So it's going very well at the moment for Mugen. And apparently the number 15 of turn lower has just jumped ahead of Zoltan Boda. So I'm not sure if Zoltan Boda has made a mistake or um, whether he just got past a few laps ago because he was, you know, about 15 seconds behind. Um, also, Bradley Brockies has got past B32 Racing, who I believe has pitted. And B32 Racing now find themselves 8 seconds behind uh, Marina Pfeiffer. Yes, just a few seconds there, as you said, but having a look through the standings in terms of LMP2, uh, that battle, that eight and a half second gap between the B32 and Marine Pfeiffer in the treble nine appears to be the closest battle in the LMP2s. In the GTEs at the moment, you've got 26 seconds separating two muster cars at the very top of the timesheets. The 54 of Daniele Primavera he leading the 53 of Giuseppe De Fuoco in terms of the GT3s is still that lead battle as well between the 41 and the 13 Mugen versus Danish Sim Racing sorry Danish Racing League and that gap appears to have uh, gone up a little bit more up to 4 seconds now yeah a lot of that round just waiting for the new times to come in and apparently Sebastian Hove went 5 seconds slower than Martin Militai which doesn't make any sense to me because if you went five seconds slower than Martin Militai, it would mean that Martin Militai had overtaken them as the gap between the two drivers is less than five seconds. That's true. So, there is yes. something fishy going on here and uh, we will not get to the bottom of it, is no. <laughs> going to be my assumption. <laughs> Something has happened, but we won't yeah. investigate. It's fine. It's, uh, so this is my new, this is my new plot for for Scooby Doo. It's like Scooby Doo comes comes around, you know, the gang's there, and they're like, "Hey, gang, look at this! This man has died." Well, too bad for him. We're off. <laughs> 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 On with our vacation. <laughs> Amazing, love it. <laughs> But yeah, that version of Super Bomberman that I was talking about is called Bomb Tag on Steam. It's a very Bomb fun game tag. to play, and I think it's free as well. So I would highly recommend it with friends. Okay, uh, but uh, yes, <laughs> the uh, but yes, that number thirteen car is slowly making its way uh, to the front of the GT3 pack, or at least so making its way to be able to uh, fight for that first place in the GT3 pack. Still four point seven seconds that gap as it stands 
Yeah, 4.4 seconds is fluctuating and it has been steadily increasing. We'll have to see what it is at the end of this lap as uh, the GT3 drivers make their way into sector three. There's a yellow flag that's an LMP2 car rejoining. And uh, Sebastian Hove will have to just uh, lift out of it ever so slightly. There's a group of four or five cars up ahead. And I have a feeling that right at the front of that group is Martin Militai who is being lapped. And maybe that'll cost him a tad of a time as it, I believe, cost Sebastian Hove considering his lap was a 215.5. So across the line, let's see what Martin Militai and Sebastian Hove are able to set. As we wait for our timings to update. Martin Militai, a 2 minute 11.7, and Sebastian Hove, a 2 minute 11.2. Yeah, so half a second uh, between them through that lap. And to be honest, so half a second could easily be attributed to just traffic. Yeah. You know, and uh, half apparently, a second at this point is really he, not that gained, different. He's gained half a second, but the gap's gone from five seconds to one and a half seconds. I mean. I know I, I work with maths each day at work, <laughs> but something something doesn't add up to that to me. That's just my personal opinion. <laughs> well, I think last lap round, Sebastian Hove didn't like how the maths worked. This time, he's quite a fan of maths, and he can see I think the McLaren up ahead, and the McLaren's actually on the back of. I want to say that's the Viaducton car, but I think it also might be the 188 of a Gert Nielsen in the Telefereningen. And that's an incident that's happened. And that is actually Martin Militai that's run wide. And now the pair of them are going to be side by side. And it means Sebastian Hove can slot past on the run down into Maggots. He's got Telefereningen right up ahead. And he's going to be hoping that he can find a way through without any issues at all. Because he's flashing the lights and trying to get the Telefereningen car to move out of the way because he knows that Martin Militai is hot on his heels. Yes, he knows that that number 41 is right there. He's making way down the Wellington straight. Oh no, sorry, that's completely wrong part of the circuit. That's the S's. It's the hangar straight. Oh God. <laughs> but yes, flashing the lights, as you said, perhaps trying to psych out a little bit the cars ahead, but trying to use as much of the slipstream as possible as they come down towards club. And Martin Militai will dive on into the pit, so he's had enough. He'll pull it in the pits right now after that mistake. And, well, they're pretty much nose to tail at the end of that lap. So when Sebastian Hove does eventually make his pit stop, you'd have to assume that will be very close between the pair of them. Yes, indeed. He's they, he screams no mass and comes into the pits. <laughs> Uh, but yes, that was going to be very interesting to see once that number 13 car actually comes into the pits next time around. Well, at least their next pit stop, I should say, rather. It's going to be very interesting to see how the the time gap is going to be between the 41 and the 13. But anyway, the 13 now has a relatively clear track ahead, does not have to worry about being attacked from behind, and also does not worry need to worry about attacking another car. So at this point, you can just think about saying, some incredibly fast lap times. I'm just looking further up the order as well and uh, turn lower now only 19 seconds ahead of salt and butter that kind of gap is looking fairly stable uh, Jerome Quico I'm not sure what he's done last time round but fast man on track right now is not Pinson Drillers Esports is Vargo Sim Racing having set a 56.4 one and a half seconds quicker than Jan Vosnica. We saw this at Indianapolis every now and then. Dewey Toman in that 1-1-7 Vargo Sim Racing car would just put in some blistering laps and be at the top of the timing sheets. Yes, being at the top of the timing sheets, and there you go, there's the 41 car now making their way down to turn two after their pit stop. But what's fairly, what I also very like about these LED boards, not only does it show you their, their class position number, but also when they're stationary in the pits, it counts up the seconds, the amount that they're stationary is on the LED boards. I like those very, very much, I must say. See, you and your LED boards, meanwhile I'm here with my, with my basic timing sheets although I think I might have to uh, upgrade to your to your LED boards um, just so that I can see this awesome information that you are that you are receiving uh, also noticing that Paul August uh, Lan is 17.2 seconds behind DIS and this is actually the battle for P3 in the GTE class of Volante Racing trying to close into DIS 
Yes, that DIS car trying to run away as fast as possible as a oh yes now having well it's that is that my eyes to see maybe it's a now the 41 moving car essentially came out directly behind the units and racing car i was about to bring up that exact point because ultravec is right on the back of uh, alexi mizzen and this is the battle for p two in the GT3 class and what could effectively be P1 depending on where Sebastian Hoge feeds out of the pets. Oh he's going to feed out in the middle of these two. Watch this. Now it's <laughs> I think Alexei Mason trying to hold off uh, the Mugen Sim Racing car, but what's interesting is that because that Mugen car just came out of the pits, the tyres would have had an opportunity, opportunity to cool down. You might not necessarily be at racing temperature anymore, so you know, you'll be a little bit slower maybe for the first three. couple of laps. Oh, that's a spin for the pins and drillers. Hypercar, no, they just action. catch it, but they got sideways, they went wide through uh, the club chicane. But they managed it, manage it to catch it, and uh, well, that's uh, Zolt Prebeck is still pushing 2.2 seconds behind Alexi Mizin. You can see him just ahead in the corner of your shot, making his way through from and down into village. Yes, yeah, so there was an instant report between the 13 and the 717, the uh, Unity Racing car and the, and, sorry, the Unison Racing and the Danish Racing League car, and there's been no uh, further action on the instant that was reported between the two of them. But yes, Alexi Mizzen now two and a quarter seconds ahead of that number 41 Mugen Racing car. And this traffic, well, is it a helper or a hindrance at this point? Because look at all of the cars behind, uh, uh, as you can see on the track map as well. But now it appears that there's not that many cars between them now. But I say that, just having a look at the, just having a quick look at the stream, the number of headlights you can see streaming onto the Wellington Street behind the uh, 717 is actually almost disturbing. <laughs> Yeah, there's a lot of headlights indeed, and that, that contact between 13 and 717 is what we saw when uh, Sebastian Hove uh, took the lead very temporarily of the GT3 class before being spun around, and uh, Stuart Zedin of the 717 couldn't really do anything in that situation to avoid the contact, and will be able to get away with that incident scot-free. And now... Alexi Mizin, or pardon me, Zoltrebek trying to close in on to Alexi Mizin in the 717. And you can see him right ahead, currently less than a second separating the pair of them. Yes, like it, less, less, than a sec, less than a second separating the two of them as they're making their way down towards Stowe. A very difficult corner, Stowe, because no matter where you put on the throttle, it's always too early at, uh, at Stowe. But uh, it's a. Uh, as you said, less than a second separating the two of them now. Oh, Unison Racing going to run a little bit wide into Club Corner. This should give Zolt Prebeck a good chance to really close in. You can see him right on the tail of that Aston Martin as they make their way on the start finish straight. And Zolt Prebeck really just yeets the car over the final curb, throwing it onto the start finish straight. Not going to be able to find a way through. But the more these two battle, the better this is for Sebastian Hover for when he makes his eventual pit stop. I guess that eventual pit stop, uh, the more that these two cars battle, the more the lead for the 13 car extends as they're making their way through the loop now. Zos Pribek and uh, that number 717 a Unison Racing car. But again, oh. I don't think Pribek can really get the amount of t attacks that he wants on the 717, just mainly because the traffic keeps on coming. And Alexi Mizzen ended up running wide. He had the um, hypercar, pardon me, not the hypercar, the prototype car on his inside through Aintree and as a result he was just on the greasier part of the circuit and he just ran completely wide which has just gifted the position over to Zolt Brubeck. So just like that, the battle for P2 in the GT3 class has, be, has come to a conclusion. Yes, with the help of traffic as well, and that's something you've always got to be careful of, especially when you're driving a GT car, is the faster traffic coming through, and you always need to have a couple, well, one eye on the road ahead and one eye in your rear view mirror to make sure that you're not, uh, to make sure you know at least where the traffic is, but that is indeed Alexei Mizzen now into third place in the GT3 class. The Unison Racing Car is, uh, sorry, it's not, the Mugen Racing Car is now 1.4 seconds ahead. The question is, can Mizzen stay attached to the rear wing of that 41? 
And the answer is no. He has a moment through Beckett's and he's lost even more time and now finds himself two and a half seconds behind Zolt Prebeck. And well, Zolt is really flying. The last lap he did a two minute 10.5. That was actually a tenth quicker than what Sebastian Hove was able to do. So presumably, once Sebastian Hove does pit, he's going to come out a tenth or so off the back or maybe a second off the back of Zolt Prebeck. Um, just an update further up the order. Jerome Quickel two and a half seconds quicker than Dewey Turman last time round. This battle for the lead of the LMP2 class is not done yet. Yes, certainly not done yet there either, as you say. Uh, the GTEs, though, is still 1-2 for Musto, 34 seconds separating the two of them now. And Sebastian Hove has yet to make that pit stop. He's got a 36-second gap over the number 41 moving car. And now that number 41 car can sort of relax from attacks from behind because, as you said, it does not appear, it does not appear at this moment in time that the 717 actually has the pace to keep up with the 41. Yeah, it's the 717 just really struggling at the present point in time. We'll see if uh, Unison Racing can uh, find their feet in a few laps and close back in because this GT3 class, I mean, we've seen it before. We've seen it time and time again and we're seeing it more and more now. Sebastian Hove into the pits. Let's see where he feeds out. Yes, he was going to feed out somewhere. I guessed that it was going to be in between uh, the two cars. You've got to see if that, got to see if that comes to fruition uh, soon. And indeed, you've got to just wait until that GT3 car continues to make its way down the pit lane. And of course, I was saying this earlier as well, Silverstone's got a very... The time loss in the pit lane at Silverstone is actually quite small compared to other circuits, mainly because you completely miss out the club chicane in the pit lane. Yeah, I'm, I'm not actually too sure because I know that the pit lane, you, you're able to cut through the entirety of the club chicane, but it all depends on where that pit limiter is because I know in the F1 game, it's actually one of the longest deltas that you lose just because of how early you have to go on the brakes and enable that pit limiter because you're essentially enabling the pit limiter almost from the very start of the pit lane entry and only able to get onto the power right on the exit of the pit lane. So I'm not too sure how different it is between um, the F1 game and R Factor 2. But either way, Sebastian Hove out of the pits and the question is where is Zolt Prebeck? That moving car, I think, has made its way past the number 13 in the pit lane. Indeed, there goes the number 13 out back onto the no, circuit, coming down it. towards the loop. It's all I think he might have actually been able to extend that lead to about five seconds. Yeah, I'm just waiting for the, the confirmation to come through on timing. 2.6 seconds, I'm riding on board with Zolt Prebeck now. And I think you can see the faint rear view lights uh, of uh, the number 13 of Sebastian Hove. So Sebastian Hove, he made those final few laps really count. Yeah, about three seconds the gap once that egg, once that gap is equalised from uh, the Danish Racing League car coming out of the pits. We've got to remember the Racing League car will have slightly colder tyres, so he might lose a second or so in the next lap. Yeah, let's see how the next lap or so goes because as you as you kind of alluded to, Sebastian Hove on those slightly colder tyres. I mean that they will be slightly fresher, but Zoltrebeck also on fresh tyres as well. And the gap currently at 2.8, just increased to 3.0 as they approach uh, Maggots, and well, that's a moment for Zoltrebeck. Loses the rear and force just to cut through the rest of uh, the complex. Yes, going through the rest of that complex, as you said. And essentially coming through, coming uh, through that complex, I'd say pretty much uh, for the first right-hander, it's almost like a gear down. For the second left-hander, it's a gear down. And for the yeah. final right-hander, it's almost like another gear down. That's how I generally drive that. That's generally how I drive that section, is just clicking down the gear for each of the turns. It's all perfect back in the pits. That is fairly interesting. Well, I did notice he had a little bit of an off through the S's. So I'm wondering if he's been pinged for track cuts and has to make a drive through. I mean, that would be very sad if it was because he definitely didn't gain any, any time. He really slowed down and he lost about half a second. 
but he's absolutely flown through the pits and uh, well going back to what I was saying about the pit lane of F1 the other thing is you have uh, for Silverstone one of the lowest pit lane speeds of the entire calendar but judging from how quickly we just saw Zolt Rebeck go through the pit lane I don't think that's the case at all in our factor two it seems to be a very fast pit lane indeed, yeah, you are correct. Uh, but yes, uh, Zos Prebeck now back onto the winding street. The question is, what is the gap? We'll find out uh, roughly once that gap is equalised. I think it might only be as much as 10 seconds now. Yeah, and I'm just wondering now, Zos Prebeck, where has he come out relative to Alexi Mizin? Because Alexi Mizin is making his way into Brooklyn now. So Alexi Mizin is eight seconds behind Zolt Prebeck who I don't know how Zolp how is Zolt Prebeck nine and a half seconds behind Sebastian Hoag when he was about five seconds behind and had to serve a drive through yeah that's what I was thinking <laughs> but I said it was a very fast pit lane I'm wondering if he went through that pit lane too quickly Zolp uh, Sebastian Hoag must have had a spin right that's the only explanation Yeah, it just doesn't cost too much time. Yeah, I thought so. It's maybe only six seconds if you need to drive through. It's not that bad at all. Yeah, six second drive through. I'll take that. I don't mind. Uh, yeah, it's almost worth punting out your competitors for six seconds, <laughs> isn't it? Of course, I, 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 that is not a suggestion to anyone on circuit. Uh, but <laughs> I mean, if, if they could serve their drive throughs in six seconds, um, well, I mean, if you can make any strategy work. As long as it's legal, then uh, go for it. It's, it's almost like, see, um, I used to talk with my friend about football. Uh, I know. Um, but he always used to give me the, he, he would always say that fouling people is illegal. And it would always blow my mind because for me, I say, yes, but you're not allowed to foul. But he says, no, you are allowed to foul. That's why you get a yellow card for it. Yes, it's, it's, that's only a warning. It's yeah, not, it's it's not warning. an item, yeah. it's only a warning to tell you not to do that again. That, it's that's like, a very it's like, good point. It's like saying, okay, you're allowed to speed on the road because you don't get sent to jail, you just get a fine for it. So, it's, <laughs> I mean, technically you could translate that as you're allowed to take out your competitors because if you don't get disqualified, you just get a drive-through for it. So, you know, it's, it's a tactical, it's a tactical foul, right? Tactical punt. <laughs> it's yes. a tactical punt, yes. As oh the, God, as the what have you across? It's eased ever so slightly now. It's now only down to two millimeters an hour when it was a maximum of five or six earlier, if memory serves me correctly. But yes, that, um, that, uh, uh, what car was it again? Yes, the uh, moving car has come out the pits and, it, as we've said, does not appear to have lost that much time to number 13 days um, recently. Is it just me, or is the 717 in the pits again? It is. Okay. So, I mean, I'm not quite sure what's happened here, but maybe... I don't know. Um, I'm really confused. I don't know why the 717 is back into the pits. Um, he only pitted like five laps ago. At least that's what it felt like to me. Okay, so schedule stop. The last one was a penalty. Okay, so it's two stops that have come through together due to a penalty followed by... Um, a schedule stop, but that was for Zolt Prebeck in the 41, um, unless I'm mistaken. Either way, okay, so how do things currently sit? Sebastian Hove is leading the GT3 class. He is 12 seconds ahead of Zolt Prebeck. Um, he has gained almost as much time in the last lap as he did to when Zolt Prebeck had to serve a drive through penalty. And then in third in the GT class, it is actually is Max Bunovic in the 717 who is 43 no make that over a minute behind Zolt Prebeck so things haven't gone well for Unison Racing yes over 60 seconds oh, behind that number 41 car as you said they just appear to have uh, fallen back as the number 17 car of Creekle has a uh, Licked up the middle sector in yellow due to an incident with that 17. Oh no. Well, that's not good for Jerome Creekle. And 
was it caused by Jerome Creeple is is the question, I guess. Because they've been making good progress, climbing up the order. They're a lap behind Jimmy Toma and a lap behind Pimbam Lark. And if anything was to happen to Varga Sim Racing, Driller's Esports would find themselves in a great position to capitalise on it. Yes, an absolutely fantastic position to capitalise. And really, that's all endurance racing. It's about just to stay close enough to capitalise on any mistakes that your opponents make. I'm just actually going to look. So, Jerome Creekle is making his way through Club Corner. And uh, for up ahead, Jiri Toman, he's actually heading into Turn 1. So, right now, Jerome Creekle in the number 17 Pins and Drillers Esports car is about a lap and uh, 10 seconds from actually overtaking Jiri Toman. And that, that feels like they've done a decent job, considering... A, that they were a fair bit further behind. That's pretty good. And last time around, Jerome Creekle, never mind, he didn't gain time. He'd been gaining about one to two seconds a lap. This time he's actually lost eight seconds due to the incident that you just mentioned. I think we have a battle a little bit further down the order because my... my Marion Pfeiffer is on the tail of the B32 racing car. And I think right as I went on board, he actually just pulled off the move uh, on the exit of a uh, cop's corner. So that's going to be Marion Pfeiffer jumping up into, I believe, that is P9. Yes, P9 for that car. As you said, still three points essentially at the end of this race. You've got to remember, it's two points, for two points for the position and one for finishing the race at that point. Yeah. Everyone gets a bonus point for completing the race. And uh, also bonus point if you have the fastest lap in your class. Or is it, or is it for pole, for being pole in your pole. Car? Okay, fine. In that case, going back to the point that I mentioned about Driller's Esports um, pittings to be able to set the fast lap, that was completely daft. And uh, that's why I'm not in charge of their strategies. <laughs> well, it's, it doesn't matter because remember, they didn't get pole position either yesterday. Uh, oh, yeah. So they didn't get that bonus point anyway. No, they didn't. Um, because they had actually set a lap, but they weren't in the server at the end of the session, which you have to be for that lap to count. So. Um, and it wasn't just for Pinsim Drillers number 10, but also for the Pinsim Drillers uh, number 17 in the LMP2 class, which did cost them. They both worked their way up the order well. Martin Henson, of course, now leading not just his class, but the entire field. And Yaron Kuikol running in P4 overall and P2 in the LMP2 class. Well, it is now reached 9 o'clock here in Central Europe. I can hear the church outside ringing the bells, which means it is time for a few words from our sponsors. We'll be right back and don't go away. The 2021 Endurance E-Racing World Championship Round 2, Film Vault 12 Hours of Silverstone, is brought to you in partnership with ESTV, Leak Gaming, SimLab, Motorvision.tv, Global Flicks, Racing for Green, and AMD Ryzen Radeon.